kinetic theory of gases gas it is everywhere around us flowing through our atmosphere encircling our huge planet creating layers of gases covering the earth in vast square kilometers buried deep beneath the foundations of the land that we live in and finally running through the very air that we breathe unlike solids and liquids gases are random groups of atoms that are spread out and these atoms and molecules are full of energy they are bouncing around constantly and can fill a container of any size or shape gas particles move in straight lines being separated from each other and they only change directions while colliding against each other or against the walls of the container in this context today we will discover one of the most important and fundamental theory of gases that help us understand its nature and property more clearly this theory is referred to as the kinetic theory of gases before we analyze the theory any further we should first have a basic understanding of kinetic energy kinetic energy is defined as the energy of motion any object has motion irrespective of a vertical or horizontal motion this energy can be derived from any form of motion ranging from vibrational rotational to translational that is movement from one place to another keeping this in mind along with the property of gases the kinetic theory of gases will be a lot easier to understand the theory basically describes the behavior of a gas in macroscopic terms that is in terms of properties that a person can directly observe and experience the kinetic molecular theory of gases begins with certain postulates that describe the behavior of molecules in a gas these are first gas consists of a collection of small particles traveling in a straight line motion and obeying newton's laws the molecules in a gas occupy no volume that is they are points collisions between molecules are perfectly elastic that is no energy is gained or lost during the collision There are no attractive or repulsive forces between the molecules. Now, to be able to experience and see the theory in practice and also derive an equation for it, let us take the help of a demonstration to understand the theory and the assumptions in the first instance 
think of a single molecule rebounding backward and forward in a container. If the molecule freezes for a few moments, just before it hits the right hand face of the box, the momentum of the molecule will be mv, where m will be its mass and v will be its velocity. If it rebounds elastically from the end of the box, its momentum will be mv, but in the opposite direction. Knowing that momentum is a vector quantity, change in momentum will then be mv minus minus mv, which is 2mv. Note that we are making an assumption that the collision is perfectly elastic. The next step is to calculate the force of the shaded green face. To do that, we need to know the dimensions of the box. So we give it length L, width W and height H. The molecule will rebel from one end of the box along to the other, rebound there and then back again. In this time, it covers a distance of 2L. Since it has a velocity V, the time taken, that is, distance divided by speed is 2L divided by V. Here again, we are making an assumption. The distance that the atom or molecule actually covers is slightly less than the full length of the box due to its own size. So, we are making the assumption that the diameter or size of the atom or molecule is insignificant. Neither are we making any allowance for the time of collision. We are assuming that time is absolutely negligible. When the particle hits the side of the box, there is a force on the face due to the reversal of the momentum of the particle. Based on this, we calculate the average force on this face, which is equal to the rate of change of momentum, that is, the change of momentum divided by the time taken. We have seen that the change of momentum is 2 mv and the time taken by the molecule or atom to travel in the box up and down again. We have already calculated that and the time is 2 l over v which results to mv squared over l. The average pressure of the face, thus, will be force divided by the area, that is, force mv squared over L divided by the area, which is width into height, that is, wh. This gives us mv squared upon L into wh, which is the volume of the box. We then replace L into W into H with a capital V denoting volume. Now, we do expect a large number of molecules in the box all going backward and forward. But, we can't really point out the numbers exactly. So, we will simply give it the symbol capital N. In this way, the force on one face due to n number of molecules bouncing backward and forward 
will be n into mv squared over v. Also, the molecule will not be just moving sideways. They will be going up and down and backward and forward. Since there are three possible directions in which they can travel, the average force therefore will be divided by three. Considering the general assumption that the molecules have similar effect in every direction, we are particularly assuming that there are large number of molecules and that their motion is entirely random. This proof relies upon the molecules traveling in uniform speed and in straight lines, even when there are large numbers. We are assuming that there are no forces at all between the molecules to disturb. We have moved on to the point where we have a general expression for the motion of gas in the box. This expression implies that the pressure in the box is equal to the number of particles into the mass into the square of the velocity divided by three times the volume of the box. The kinetic theory of gases, thus, is a very critical element in understanding the nature of the gases and their molecules. Those gases which lurk within us, from the labyrinths beneath us to the world around and above us, encircling us with their energy.